we studied that antibody bind to its specific epitopes. This binding involves chemical interactions which are non-covalent. These forces hold antigen and antibody together once they come into close proximity. These non-covalent interactions include hydrogen bonds, electrostatic forces or ionic bonds, van der Waals forces, and hydrophobic forces. Since all these are weak forces, you can now understand why I said that antigen and antibody must come in close proximity. These weak forces can occur only over a short distance. This binding between antigen and antibody is dependent on the amino acids and other chemical groups present at the site of contact. More is the proximity of these chemical groups more efficient is the binding. Another factor on which this binding depends is the shapes of these epitopes in the antigen binding site. If these fit well into each other then overall binding is strong, since more will be the number of bonds formed. In immunology you will often encounter the terms, affinity, and avidity of an antibody for an antigen. These two terms tells about the strength with which an antibody binds to the antigenic determinants or epitopes. Affinity of an antibody Affinity is defined as the strength with which one antigen binding site binds to one antigenic determinant or epitope. Or in other words, we can say that affinity is the force of attraction between an antigen binding site and one epitope. This force of attraction would be strong if the shape of epitope fits perfectly in the antigen binding site. This is because number of bonds formed will be maximum. If the shape of epitope is not a perfect fit then this force of attraction is weak. Now, let's talk about avidity of an antibody. Avidity is defined as the total strength with which an antibody molecule binds to the antigenic determinants or epitopes. This involves all the antigen binding sites of the antibody. For example, immunoglobulin G and E have two antigen binding sites since these are monomers. Immunoglobulin A is found as monomer, dimer and trimer, so it has two, four and six antigen binding sites. Immunoglobulin M has maximum ten antigen binding sites. As you can see here immunoglobulin M binds to the antigen at four epitopes. As the number of antigen binding sites increases, the strength of overall binding also increases. Now, the dissociative association of this antigen from the antibody requires all the bonds to be broken simultaneously. So, avidity provide a more stable antigen-antibody complex. This is of great significance because the stable antigen antibody complexes formed will now be eliminated from the body more efficiently. So, now we understand that affinity is the strength of binding between a single antigen binding site and a single epitope. Whereas, avidity is the overall strength of binding between an antigen and an antibody. It involves all the antigen binding sites of an antibody. Now, there can be situations where similar epitopes are present on two or more different antigens. So, the antibodies specific to one of these can also bind to the other antigen. This is known as cross reactivity. Cross reactivity is defined as the ability of an antibody to react with similar epitopes on different antigens.